Hello, everyone. Welcome to another exciting AMA. I'm Jen Consalvo from Establish, the company that powers the Start Be Your program and this summit. And I'm thrilled today to be joined by Crystal Peterson, the Director of Registry at .us. Thank you so much, Crystal, for joining us today. Thanks, Jen. Uh, I am so thrilled to be here. Um, I'm excited to share some information and answer any questions with people in the audience today about that US and, uh, you know, perhaps even inspire somebody to take that next step in their startup journey. Awesome. So for all of you out there, the way this is going to work is I'm going to kick things off with a bit of an overview of Crystal's background and ask some questions. But my hope is that uh, you're really going to be the ones to take advantage of this session and ask the questions. So if you have a question in mind, just drop it in the chat box and we will uh, jump right into it. So a little bit about Crystal. Uh, she's responsible for the operation, management, growth, and development of many of the world's most prominent top-level domains. So we're talking about domains today. This is Ask a Domain Expert. And top-level do domains are things like .co, .us, .biz, and .nyc, among many others that Crystal manages. Uh, so with deep expertise in the domain in industry, Crystal both guides the sales and marketing strategies of these TLDs through integration, strategic planning, and competitive uh, environmental analysis. She's also our expert for all things about domains and brands today. So we're excited to get this talk going. So uh, Crystal, you have a really unique background from, uh, from the arts to domains and marketing. And I would love for our audience to get to know a little bit more about you and your journey to the domain world. Uh, excellent. Yes, um, it is a, a bit new, uh, unique. So as my uh, first career, I was a professional ballet dancer, um, also danced with a modern company for a little bit, um, which was really exciting. I was able to um, pursue uh, a huge passion of mine, which was dance uh, from an early age, and um, also was able to enter the professional arena. Um, and get, you know, had the joy of getting paid for what I love to do most. Um, I had great many lessons there uh, that I was able to learn from that um, and, you know, eventually able to carry with me into what I do today. Um, but uh, I retired from dancing and when I retired there, I moved to the DC area and entered the domain name industry um, and, and entered my first job with the domains was part of the events and uh, marketing department. Um, so, you know, it was, it was very interesting. Um, I, you know, starting out, it's, uh, you know, you don't know the ins and outs, uh, you know, you're training all the time. There's just little pieces that you start learning and getting to, to, um, to enhance and grow and uh, kind of make your own. Um, so, uh, you know, what I, what I knew about, uh, the, you know, my job was events and I, I felt that I could learn some of those ins and outs and, you know, in the, in the domain name space, uh, you know, fortunately while I was, uh, while I was on the job, um, which was very valuable and, you know, it was some good lessons that I was, uh, able to take with me for that. Um, you know, just like with dance, I had to take some risks. Uh, had to make a lot of mistakes um, and, and perform in front of uh, large audiences uh, to get the job done. Wow, what a what a change to go from performing arts into events and marketing. Like, did you feel like you had just stepped in a, into a completely different world? <laughs> uh, yes, um, it was. Uh, well, you know, I'll say yes, um, but also a little bit no. Um, you know, with a dance career, you always hear about the regular jobs and the, um, you know, the nine to five jobs, and they're different than what, you know, you do as a dancer. You know, as a dancer, you eat, breathe, and, um, and live in the dance studio. Uh, and when I entered the, the job market, you know, suddenly I wasn't in a dance studio anymore. And so it was very different. It, like, I had no idea what was going on. But, um, you know, with events, I could take a little piece of what I had been doing. Um, you know, while I was dancing, I was also a dance teacher. Um, and so to be able to 
help um, craft shows, help to, uh, you know, to put all of that together was very much like, um, you know, the events and that marketing. And I had also grown up, you know, kind of helping from the office side of, uh, of the dance company as well. So to be able to kind of take some of that marketing um, knowledge that I had that I didn't realize was marketing knowledge, but to pull that into what I was doing, um, that was a little bit of comfort in the big scary world that I found myself in, which was regular job. <laughs> Well, I think it, it, um, for me, seeing people who have had such varied backgrounds, there's this like, you know, Renaissance woman element, right, where you get to, you get to draw on all kinds of different um, sensibilities and bring a unique perspective to your work. So I, I, I really love that. I think it's fascinating. Um, switching gears a little bit to talk about mm -hmm. domains. So, you know, I mentioned a few that you've worked on like .co and, and .us, which, uh, which we've actually been both. So for all of you listening right now, um, established.us is our current domain. That's our current brand. Uh, before this, Frank and I owned a company called tech.co. And, you know, and these, these uh, you know, domains, URLs are more than just letters for us, right? It's not like a lot of people just get a .com and it's, it's, a, it's the URL they were looking for. But for us, we were very, put a lot of thought into it. So what can you share about, you know, how do you think about domains and, and the selection process and what they mean to people? Uh, you know, it's a, it's a great question. Um, and like you said, there's, there's many folks out there that um, end up on a .com. .com is one of the oldest uh, and what's, well, the most well-known extension, but, you know, one of the oldest extensions out there. Um, that doesn't mean it's old, but it's, you know, one of the longest running. And we think that, uh, you know, due to that, that it may be the best. Um, but we like to take a different approach. Um, we believe that, one, there are many extensions out there that um, can resonate and uh, help for startups and businesses as they're getting online. Um, one, you know, we think that both in front of and behind the dot are both very important. Um, and so, you know, with established.us, um, I think, you know, you guys have uh, one, a great name. You also have est.us um, as a complement to um, your whole brand. But, you know, that, that says something that, you know, you are, um, resonating with, uh, you know, the, the U S market. I think that's fantastic. And if you look at it uh, as established.us, um, that just brings people together, right. Um, can, can you kind of engender that brand feeling with a.com? I don't believe so. Um, doesn't mean that the.com is bad, but for your brand now, I think that's great. And with, um, tech.co, uh, you know, as you had mentioned, I, um, I had the, the fortune to be on the um, that co team and helped it launch in 2010. And you know, shortly thereafter, we started a partnership with uh, with you and Frank with um, with Tech Cocktail into Tech.co. And you know, I think for the brand that you were creating, that was the perfect um, brand to resonate on, right? You know, getting into the early adopters getting into some of that startup market, again, very much like established as well, but um, you know, that said something about your brand. So ultimately, I think when folks are looking for a brand, it's not just about the one, the, the extension that um, everybody else uses. Um, it's really about what resonates with your brand because there's many other extensions that, you know, in some ways are um, just as, uh, just as, tenured, I should say, as come, um, but can help to engender a better brand message for your particular business. Um, and maybe the .com is for you as well. Um, and maybe you have that in your, your stable of domain names, but you use another brand. Um, but, you know, we believe that it is very important that you look at what is behind the dot. So there's a question from the audience right now 
Um, can you tell us a few benefits uh, of using like a .us versus .com? So if you could expand a little bit on that. Sure. Um, I believe from a, a benefit area, um, you know, in some ways the the way you use a domain name um, across is uh, is very similar from a com to a biz to a co to a, um, a photo to a cars. Uh, you know, there are some other new extensions out there too. So the, the way that you can utilize it um, are very similar across extensions. It really comes into what is the message that you want to be saying to your, you know, your customer traffic um, as you are um, building your online presence. So, you know, the benefit of using a .us, um, one, kind of getting into that brand building of uh, a .us, um, you know, kind of encompassing um, that, that arena. Um, we find many couples actually uh, really like to use .us from, from that standpoint. Um, the uh, online uh, you know, webinar platform, which uh, we are utilizing in part today too, Zoom, zoom.us, um, you know, th that's how they say their, their, their name. And they love that because, um, you know, it is all about bringing people together. So I think a benefit of using, using a .us is, or a .us is, you know, from that, from that brand, but from the way that you can connect it to your website and all of that, there's really no benefit of one over the other. Um, it comes in the brand message that you want to portray. Yep. So um, I was, some people have heard me talk about this before, but when we were previously, our, our last company, Tech Cocktail, uh, when we transitioned to tech.co, we also, are, if you looked at our logo, it looked like techco. So it was tech.co. And when we, when we launched that, that was a, a huge sort of, um, it was a huge rebrand and a growing up for us as a company. So we went from being this great, you know, tech cocktail, we do events, we bring startups together, you know, we do all these things, uh, but it still had this feeling, and I, I love the tech cocktail brand, um, but it, it was very grassroots and it had this, this it evoked one sort of uh, vision about who we were. And when we transitioned and rebranded as tech.co, it was this, such a, a mature sort of um, next evolution in who we were as a company. All of a sudden, we were a media company. We were grown up. We were working with huge brands. We were working with the Googles and American Airlines and Capital Ones and you know Chase Bank, all these incredible brands. And I think they were able to look at us in a different way. And you know, I can I can tell you right now, even back then, this is years and years ago, you know. Tech.com, I don't even, I think someone had been sitting on it for years. I don't even know if there was anything really special there, but we were like, well, we're never going to have tech.com, but tech.co is interesting. And that was a, that was a big moment for us. And, you know, building our company on that brand uh, is what got people's attention and eventually led to us being acquired. That's so awesome. I'm a, I'm a huge proponent of being very thoughtful about you know, your brand, which includes now that, that dot, whatever you choose, it's just, it is important. And I feel like it's, um, a lot of people have a, you know, they kind of just go with whatever they can get because they think they need to go in a certain direction. And then it's hard to find them. It's not as memorable. It's, you know, you've got to look them up, look up a few different things to try to find them. And that's, those are all important considerations in my mind. Yes. Yes, absolutely. So um, I've, I've heard you mention that you think about these things as like, these are, these are platforms, right? For people to build, build their vision on, build their dreams on. Um, what, can you share any stories about some interesting, other than, you know, established and, and tech.co, some other uh, entrepreneurs and companies that you've seen um, build some really interesting dreams? Absolutely. So um we had the uh, fortune to um, put together a, a ambassador stories um, uh, within uh, several of the extensions that um, 
that I helped to manage, but specifically within .us, we were able to um, put these ambassador stories together um, by finding um, people out in the community that were using their .us in um, in fun and different ways. So. Um, you know, we had every everything from a corporate company, you know, as I mentioned, uh, zoomed at us and, you know, their chief happy off officer and, you know, really being able to kind of meet them and understand, you know, why they wanted to continue to build on uh, the .us brand. Um, and then also we had uh, the opportunity to meet with a young couple who were putting together their, their wedding website, right? For them, the dot us uh, just made sense. It was the first thing that they turned to, um, you know, as they were looking, because, you know, when they were looking together, they're like, oh, well, you know, it's, you know, our wedding is about us. And so we want to want to be on that. Um, and then we also had a story um, around uh, mom and uh, her, her son, who, uh, who were able to build a small business. Um, and it's called Three Dudes Photo Booth. Um, and they were able to build a small business on the .us. And it was important to them because they had a community business. Um, you know, they were, you know, in the local community. And to just to be able to uh, have that .us, um, you know, to them gave, that flair, as well as the fact that, you know, they could get the, the name that they wanted, which was awesome. Um, they could get the name that they wanted in several different extensions, but they really wanted the .us behind, behind their name. Um, and then there's another uh, company uh, and group that's called uh, Cezion. And, uh, you know, putting together uh, their business, uh, you know, really looking at having that .us um, really kind of helped to um, solidify, you know, where they were and what they were looking to grow and, you know, in the customer base that they were, they were looking for. So, um, you know, while, while being global, they could also be local for them. And so, and that was, that was really helpful. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of um, examples out there. There's also um, certain examples that folks may see, especially in the .us space um, for very, what we call hyper-local um, addresses. And, you know, there's many uh, cities and uh, libraries and uh, municipalities that use a, um, a .us for many of their sites too. They, they use .org, but they also like to use .us. Um, and that gives them that sense of, of community for, for where they are in you know, their towns, townships, cities, and municipalities, as I mentioned. So lots of cool examples out there for you know, why, why people are choosing uh, their domain extension versus just getting something. Um, but they're really putting thought into it. Right. So um, that's, you know, one of the things that I've always loved about your approach when you look at, uh, at your domains is you really, as a company, you actually look at the stories and you're looking at the audience and you're, you know, like going back to the .co days, that was a community. That was a, a fascinating approach to saying, you know, hey, this isn't just an extension. When you get a .co, you're part of this community and this is, this is a really cool place to be. And look at all the other startups and interesting innovators who are doing things here. And the same thing with .us, looking at, you know, looking at the perspective of there, there are people who are doing it from a local perspective, as you said. Uh, there are, there's the veteran perspective that we were talking about and sort of that, that American United States aspect of it. Um, there's, there's a lot of different pieces here. And this is where Again, going back to branding, these things can really can really matter and make you uh, make you feel part of, of something bigger. Yep. Yes. Um, we like to think of uh, our team um, that we don't just bring you a domain name. We we help to make that into an experience, right? And like you said, we like to create a community uh, around those extensions. Um, 
and with that US, uh, you know, there's so many different types of communities to be had. Um, you know, you mentioned vet veterans. We are um, super excited to have sponsored the, you know, the that US veteran startup of the year, um, which will be announced. And so we're excited about that. Um, but that's, uh, you know, one community um, among many um, with the that co-extension, we had so many different communities in um, in many different uh, areas of the world as well. You know where start startups could come and kind of get information or be able to um, to you know get some freebies around uh, building their startup. Um, and then another extension that uh, we also uh, helped to manage is the .NYC extension. You know, very hyper local for the uh, New York City um, area, and you know we helped to manage that with the City of New York. Um, and it's really about kind of building that local community, um, but it all kind of comes back to communities and and how to build that versus just being a um, cold platform. Um, we want to be able to empower startups. We want to be able to kind of build that, um, that sense of camaraderie, um, so that you're not just stepping into, uh, you know, a cold online environment that, you know, seems scary and you don't know what's going on, but you can, you can help get connected to folks that can, can maybe help you. You can find your own, um, but we want to help to uh, empower, empower startups to, to be able to, um, to utilize us where we can and to be able to connect people. Awesome. So uh, we're just under 10 minutes left. Um, there are a couple things I, I want to get to. Um, the first is I want to rem remember to tell everybody that uh, as part of this community, part of this audience, you can go grab a free.us domain. Uh, and if you're not sure how tomorrow, um, our team put together an awesome video and they're going to walk you right through it. So we have a great segment tomorrow where we're going to talk about um, our veteran.us veteran startup of the year program sponsored by .us. Thank you so much. Um, so we're going to showcase some of those companies and we're going to actually show you how to go in and, and grab one of those URLs. Um, and to set up your own website. So if you have an idea in the back of your mind and you, you know, haven't really thought about how to get it off the ground yet, you might want to watch that and get inspired. Um, but I also want to talk about, and thank you for all of that. We really, really appreciate it. It's brought a whole, uh, a whole new special element to our program this year. And it's, it's been amazing to witness, uh, you know, the different entrepreneurs coming through who've served our country in so many different ways. We were excited to, to do so. It's, a, it's an area that's near and dear to our hearts as well. So um, the veteran community, uh, you know, we can't thank folks enough for all of their service. Um, I wanted to make sure that I get in here. Uh, another story that I find fascinating, which is, you know, you talked about a number of entrepreneurs um, and startups that you've been able to connect with over the years uh, through their domains. But sometimes a TLD can actually be a, a startup with its own story, um, which you've been part of. So can you talk about that a little bit? I think our audience might be interested in hearing that. Sure. Um, so I believe I had mentioned before that I had the opportunity to be part of um, the team behind the .co domain name. And uh, it, uh, it itself launched um, locally in the mid nineties, but I helped and was part of the team to help bring it to the global stage in 2010. So uh, that co, uh, as it was launching, um, you know, we were a startup ourselves. Um, and that's why for us, it really resonated to bring a community of, um, you know, startups and innovators and idea makers together um, you know, into the same kind of environment and some of the same thought processes that we were doing and learning all at the same time. Um, it was uh, a fantastic, um, a fantastic journey, uh, you know, kind of pursuing our dreams, you know, wearing many, many hats, uh, staying up late, having to get up early, 
um, you know, burning, burning the midnight oil at both ends, as they say, um, it was, it was amazing. Um, and then a few short years later, um, right around five, um, we actually, yeah, uh, sorry, four and a half, but we had the opportunity to kind of have our unicorn story and uh, the .co team um, and the company was sold uh, into a, a larger company for um, a little over a uh, hundred million dollars. So that was that was exciting, um, and we were able to then continue to grow .co for those that continued with the the team as they wanted to. Uh, and as well as I had the opportunity to start working with uh, some other extensions. And this is where I was introduced to be able to help grow the .us uh, extension and .biz and some of those others um, to the point where we had uh, another um, sale. And uh, just a few short months ago, uh, GoDaddy, the company, a large uh, website provider company opened a new division within their company and bought uh, the registry business again. Um, and so, you know, going from uh, one company to another, but, you know, kind of still with that startup mentality and having that, that, you know, really well-oiled team working, but, you know, knowing that, you know, we need to pick up and, do and pursue whatever we need to do to, uh, you know, to make it work, uh, which is, you know, very much like that startup mentality that we had um, 10, 10 years ago, which just feels like it was yesterday in some ways. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, to, to just have that pick up and do mentality, you know, which, you know, all startups kind of have to do and to, you know, have that thick skin and the keep on keeping on, um, you know, we, you know, our team still has that um, and it's been exciting, but it's been a very exciting ride. It's not over yet. Um, can't wait to see what's kind of coming down the pike to help, um, you know, to help not only, you know, like for us, you know, a win is when we help others kind of get online and, and kind of enter that arena, then that, you know, is a win for us because, you know, that that's gross there, but uh, we don't win unless others win. So kind of being able to see others' passions and pursuits and dreams come alive uh, online is kind of what we live for. So we know that there's more out there and can't wait to see what's around the corner. But it's been, like I said, it's been an awesome journey. So I just love the fact that you guys have lived and breathed that same experience that so many of your customers have experienced, right? You know, there's, <clears throat> it's, it's one thing for a, a big, huge corporation to set up services for startups. Um, but it's another when, you know, you're a sort of a scrappy startup in your own right, yeah. trying to sell and build this community around startups, and then yeah. go, then get sold and then get sold again, which goes to show you never know where things will keep going. There really is always another play. There's always another story. Um, it's, it's fascinating. Um, what did you learn? This is probably my, my last question. Uh, what did you learn about risk during all of that? Knowing that risk is such a huge element uh, for your customers. I apologize. Um, uh, you cut out just a little bit on me. Could you ask the sure. last part of that question again? Sorry about yep. that. That's okay. What have you learned about risk? Knowing that risk is such an important element uh, of, of life for your customers. Yep. Um, well, one of the things, one of the main things uh, about risk is um, you have to be willing to take them, um, which is hard. Uh, getting out of your comfort zone um, and, you know, really kind of stepping out on faith, uh, if, if you will, that, um, that good things will happen. Um, and they don't always happen. Uh, they don't always uh, come to fruition. But if you never try, you can never succeed. Um, and so, you know, we had to learn to, um, you know, kind of live in the mantra of try, fail, adjust, right? And, um, 
if you try and you find it's failing, you, you want to find that fast, of course, because you want to be able to kind of turn around and, you know, and, uh, and work in another direction if need be. But um, with risks, uh, you know, you kind of, got, you, you do, you have to put yourself out there. Um, you know, from our perspective on our team, we had risks in um, branding, actually. Uh, you know, how is it that we're going to, to reach that, that target market that we ourselves are in? How is it that we're going to reach? Um, we also took a risk um, in one of, uh, in the first year of launch, um, we actually partnered with, uh, with GoDaddy at the time, uh, who was a partner of ours, um, and, uh, and did a Super Bowl commercial. A domain name registry had had never really done a Super Bowl commercial. It That's was rather true. far-fetched that GoDaddy was doing Super Bowl commercials, but for a domain name registry to partner with them was just kind of unheard of. That was a huge risk. Um, and it it did pay off. It helped in kind of some of that brand recognition. Um, it helped in many, many different ways, but that was that was a big risk. Um, <laughs> I remember Super Super Bowl Sunday. We were uh, all kind of like, <laughs> um, "What's going to happen?" But I you know, but but you you have to be kind of willing to to yeah. take them, putting yourself out there, whether it's in you know your pricing, whether it's in your campaign idea, um, you know how to go to market, um, how to. Uh, you know, look at, you know, some of the different demographics that you want, but, um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's an important factor. It's a scary factor. Um, but, you know, but something that we all live with as part of our, our journey. Exactly. Exactly. I think we're at time. Thank you so much, Crystal, for being here with us, for being part of our program this year. Uh, It's been really wonderful. And for all of you out there, this room is about to close. Thanks for joining us. Make sure you check out our other sessions with Lo Tony and a whole bunch of other folks. And we'll see you online. Thanks, everyone.